Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is video number two of the Get to Know Your Fave Wheel video series. And today we're actually going to spin with the wheel um, so you can see how it works in action. Um, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about chairs. So my recommendation is for any kind of spinning wheel, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable to have a chair with um, arms. So if you have a chair, say a kitchen chair or something like that, that doesn't have any arms, you're good. Um, but if it does have um, arms on the chair, I would recommend to sit forward in the chair so that when your arms are pulling back on the fiber, for example, um, you know, your elbows are going to run into the arms of the chair. Um, the second thing to take into consideration is how high the orifice is. If um, you are spinning in a chair that's really high, you're going to be spinning, you can kind of see this angle here, you're going to be spinning down into the wheel. And that's just because it's going to be comfortable for you to hold the yarn up, or the fiber up here, right? I'm going to be, let's see here, I'm going to be holding it way up here, but it's going to be going down into the wheel like this. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you want to pick a height so that it's comfortable for the for the yarn to go straight into the wheel like this. You also don't want to you know do this in a really short chair because you'll have the same kind of problem, right? This is optimal. You know, my chair right now is actually uh, for my Kromsky spin minstrel, which the orifice for that is about this much taller, so it's actually perfect for that wheel. It's a little bit uncomfortable for this wheel, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference for me. But I thought it would be a really good opportunity to talk about chairs, or seating arrangement, rather. Alright, so I think I've checked the tension on this about 50 times, and I think it's good. And here we have my, the leader. I like to do the loop at the bottom, so it's just easier to get this started. And then I have my um, blue face luster, which I'm going to do a little spinning with. This is just a combed top uh, preparation. This is specifically a uh, blue face luster humbug. So um, it's got a white and brown mixed together so you get a really nice heathered yarn. I made a pair of socks out of this uh, fiber and I really liked how, how it turned out. But um, basically I'm just going to pull off a piece like this and then I'm going to do just a little bit of pre-drafting and pre-drafting is when you um, pull the fibers out a little bit just so that it's a little bit thinner and when um, you're spinning you want this pre-drafted fiber to be larger than but pretty close to what your finish um, the finished diameter of your yarn will be um, this is something that will just take practice. I remember when I first started doing this, I would pull it into a bunch of little pieces and I'd pull it too hard. And other times, like, I wouldn't do this little um, inchworm thing where I'm pretty much just moving up an inch or two at a time. And then I would have, like, these giant fat pieces. So this, this part will just take a little bit of practice. But it's not a big deal if you mess up from time to time everybody does. Um, other places will call this attenuating the fibers, which is exactly what I just told you it does. So if you hear if you hear that term, you'll know uh, what that means. So we're going to pull this through. Okay, a little bit of spin here. I do kind of a weird method whenever I spin, where I like to draft back and then I um, let it feed on rather quickly. It's just how I do it. <laughs> there are lots of ways to spin, there's lots of ways to draft, it doesn't really matter too much. Just whatever is comfortable for you, and if you want to really get into spinning, then um, there's oodles of other references out there that sort of tell you the different ways to spin to make different kinds of yarns. So if you um, want to go into yarn theory or if you want to do like historical stuff, 
that will be uh, very useful for you. But as you can see, it's I'm having almost no difficulties whatsoever with spinning this. I think the tension might be a little bit too high, so what I'm going to do is adjust this down a little bit. I'm getting some th unwanted thin pieces. And you notice how quiet it is. You would think that with a plastic PVC wheel, it would, you know, sound maybe a little bit rickety or it wouldn't be quite so smooth, but it's actually a really great wheel. The way that this wheel is made, you don't necessarily have to oil it. In fact, some places you shouldn't oil it. For example, um, down here at the bottom where uh, the two pedals will meet up to the center of the wheel so that um, it, can, it can twist the wheel. There's a ball bearing in there, so you never have to um, uh, oil that part. In fact, the only two places I've ever oiled my babe wheel has been the orifice here, where the dry band goes over, and then occasionally I'll do that on the uh, metal shaft that goes into the wheel back here. And um, I find that when I am taking my wheel apart and putting it back together, I'll put just a teeny, 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 teeny little bit of Vaseline down by the pedals. Um, you're not supposed to oil those because it'll cause it to squeak, but if you use just like a little bit of uh, Vaseline or any kind of really viscous um, natural lubricant, it will work just fine for that. But I've had this wheel for, I think, three years now, and I've never needed to do it outside of um, just me taking it apart. So it's a pretty low maintenance wheel, which is one of those things I really love about it. You can also paint these. Um, you just, when, whenever you get the pieces, you take it all apart, or as much as you can anyway. And um, you can use any kind of acrylic paint, or you can use spray paint. You can stain the petals if you want. I would recommend doing all that before you start using the wheel, otherwise um, you might have um, built up dirt or grime or something. It's just better to do it right from the producer or the manufacturer. And if you look really closely at the petals on my wheel, the um, there's actually foot marks from where my feet have been. <laughs> I don't want that. I mean, it's just, I suppose I could sand it. <laughs> I would just, you know, leave mine the way that it is. But you can definitely paint your wheel and stain the petals if you want, which a lot of people do. So, anyway. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about Babe Wheels, you can also send me a, an email or you can post in the comments below and I'll reply back to you. If there are more questions about uh, specific things with the wheel, I can um, also put down in the description below some information about the wheel, this particular wheel that I have. Um, but generally speaking, it's a really great wheel. It's perfect for beginners. It's perfect for anybody who um, is sort of operating on a budget. It does take up a little bit more space than some other wheels. But, you know, unless you have an apartment smaller than the one that I was in last year, I had two, I had two wheels in an apartment that was about 179 square feet. Less than 200 square feet, I had two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if your apartment is smaller than that, then, um, you know, we can talk about other options. Uh, but if you just want a wheel, something that's durable, something that's going to produce really great yarn and be low maintenance and, you know, maybe you can even take a beating from traveling, this is exactly the wheel that you need to get. So, anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye!